So transcable is a way of delivering large devices to the aorta in patients who have diseased or small iliofemoral arteries. So by definition, that means it's the minority of patients. And as particularly in the world of transcatheter aortic valve uh, replacement or TAV or TAVI, the devices have got smaller and smaller. So the truth is the proportion of patients who need alternate access has got smaller. But nonetheless, we estimate that somewhere between 5 and 10% of patients undergoing transcatheter aortic valve replacement require alternate access. And then really it's up to the operator and the team doing the procedure as to what they prefer. In the US, the commonest approach is subclavian, so either a surgical cut down or a percutaneous procedure through the axillary artery. Carotid is popular in some European countries. Uh, and in some centers in the US, transcable has become the predominant, and that's the case at my center. So our preferred alternate access after transfemoral is transcable. So I would actually start a little bit going backwards and say, well, what are we doing right now with transcable? And so what we're using to close the hole between the aorta and the vein uh, up until now has been using a plug that was designed to close a patent ductus arteri arteriosus in a, in a baby. Um, and that device is clearly not designed to close a hole between the aorta and the cava that you make with a sheath. So we've been using that device off-label. It works. We've tested it in you know, a hundred patient prospective study and it's been used in many hundreds more than that in clinical practice, but it's not perfect. So we went about designing a dedicated device that would have more of the features that we require for this procedure and that is clearly designed and dedicated for this. So it is a closure device that's based on a nitinol mesh, similar to an Amplatzer device, um, but it has a number of additional features that make it really attractive. It has a central guide wire lumen, so you never give up guide wire, which is a really important, you know, uh, adjunct. It has a lot more fabric built into the device to make it, uh, to promote hemostasis. So we know from our experience with the Amplatz device that when we close the hole between the aorta and the IVC, that two thirds of patients will still have flow through the device when they leave the cath lab, which is fine and is safe, but we'd all prefer if we could close it up. So uh, one of the advantages of this new device is that it promotes hemostasis, it will close the tract up much faster. So we uh, designed, uh, tested, and got FDA approval to test this device in patients for the first time uh, under the early feasibility pathway that the FDA recently uh, developed. So this was a first demand study. We tested the device in 12 patients, patients with severe aortic stenosis who are undergoing TAVA uh, and who did not have uh, access through the femoral arteries. It was a mixture of extreme, high, intermediate risk patients uh, and so we performed transcable access the way we usually do. We performed TAVA using uh, commercially available TAVA valves, and then we used this dedicated closure device to close it in 12 patients. The primary endpoint of this study was technical success, which was to find the exit from the cath lab. And for that, the patient had to be alive. We had to have been able to perform the transcable access, de deliver the valve, and close it on the way out. And we were successful in 100% of patients, so in all 12 patients. Um, so that's the primary endpoint. One of the things that we're really keen to see was whether there was, uh, whether there was any bleeding, because obviously it makes sense. If you make a hole in the aorta, you, the first thing you worry about is bleeding. Um, in this study, there was no significant bleeding related to transcable, which was a significant improvement on our experience with the, uh, the off-label Amplatzer devices. One of the 12 patients had one unit blood transfusion during the procedure before we even got to the closure part and was adjudicated as un, you know, medic, clinically irrelevant to the transcable. Patient started out with low hemoglobin and was transfused during the procedure, sort of prophylactically. Um, so really we can say that the device eliminated transcable related bleeding, was very easy to deploy, was deployed successfully in 100% of patients. Uh, and it's important to say, this is early feasibility. This is, this is not a definitive pivotal study for approval of the device, but certainly really promising results with this dedicated device. Well, what I would love to see is a bigger study with this device now. And that's something that is in the pipeline. Um, you know, this device does have potential applications outside of Transcable. Some of those features that I mentioned, like having a wire through the device, having features that resist pull through, uh, also potentially means that this could be applied to other applications, ASD, VSD closures, uh, closing holes in other parts of the cardiovascular system that we're using devices that aren't really great for the, those applications. But focusing on transcaval, um, now I'm very hopeful that if we can have better devices like this, that this procedure then becomes easier and simpler and more reproducible and more people will adopt it.